He has a BCS National Championship ring. He was the fourth running back selected, but when it's all said and done, he may be the best running back selected in the 2013 NFL Draft. Brent and Mark back on Mark Rogers TV to talk about the Green Bay Packers, and of course they took Dayton Jones with that first-round selection, defensive tackle from UCLA, but with that second selection, Brent, I know you've got a ton to say about Eddie Lacy of Alabama. Who? <laughs> Just picking. Eddie. The story within the story on this Lacy pick is that twice in this draft, Green Bay traded with the team that knocked him out of the playoffs last year, San Francisco. Allowed them to come up and take a player that they wanted. And first of all, you wonder, is that even okay? Is that is that fine to do that? But at the same time, you wonder, will they take the player that you want? And, you know, looking at the mock drafts heading in this year, a lot of these drafts, mock drafts, had Green Bay taking Lacey in the first round at pick 26. And so when they passed on him there, and then they passed on him at 55 and traded down, you thought, well, obviously this team does not want Eddie Lacey. And then he's still available at 61. You wonder if Monte Ball, a local product, a Wisconsin guy, grew up in Wisconsin, played for the Badgers. When he went uh, before our pick at 61, you wonder if Green Bay sort of thought, well, the run on running backs is going to happen. Let's take somebody now. And then they end up taking Ball, uh, excuse me, they end up taking Lacey at 61. Huge value when you compare it to where people thought he would go, but you wonder why is it that he lasted that long? There were injury concerns, people talking about his hamstring injury. These Alabama players are dinged up. They arrive in the NFL dinged up. Um, but he is unlike any Packer running back that we've had in the, in the last several years. He is a big Big guy. He comes in at 5'11", uh, 231. He is a guy that obviously is known and famous for his spin move, but can pound you as well. Is very physical. We've got a, a guy who finished up our year. Uh, what is his name? Dewan Harris. Uh, he's like three foot seven, 102 pounds or something. I don't know. But this is the thunder to his lightning we're hoping in Green Bay. And let me tell you a little bit about what happened in the Carlstrom household, Mark. You know that I have more kids than I can keep up with here. Uh, too many to mention. But we all, every year, watch the draft together. My kids pretend as if they're interested maybe to make the old man happy. Oh, my daughter says they're actually interested. So they kind of get passionate as they feel their dad's getting passionate. And I'm clamoring for Eddie Lacy. I want this guy for Green Bay finally to have somebody who can run the ball for us. When we don't pick him at 26, they're a little bummed out. When we trade out at 55, they're really bummed out. When we pick him at 61, we cheered so loudly here, Mark. Keep going. We cheered so loudly. Go ahead and get your phone. What about it? We cheered so loudly here that my five-year-old began bawling because he was afraid. Okay? That's how excited we were. Why were we excited? We were excited for this reason, Mark. Again, as I mentioned, teams were able this year to play their safeties deep against us because we had no running threat. And that limited Rodgers' capability to throw down the field. And there are, in my book, two ways to defeat that. Dra get a running back who will bring the safeties up and get tight ends who can catch the ball up the middle that will bring the safeties up. We address that on, uh, with, with the Lacey pick. I think in round four or five, you're going to see a pass catching tight end picked that's going to perhaps be the guy that uh, can take a, a pass over the middle to bring the safeties up as well. 
to me, Eddie Lacy's marquee moment was not the BCS National Championship, a drubbing of Notre Dame in which he just had his way on the ground, but Alabama could do no wrong in that game. It was the second half of the Georgia SEC Championship game because Bama got punched in the mouth. Georgia was playing extremely well. You had a feeling at that point it was going to be a 60-minute game. Nick Saban and the boys came out at halftime to the second half and determined to run the football, not get fancy, but run the football against maybe the most talented, maybe not the most productive, but one of the top ten most productive defenses in the country, but probably the most talented front seven and complete defense in the country, and it was mostly Lacey. It was also T.J. Yeldon, but mostly Lacey pounding the ball straight ahead, and it, was, it wasn't was anything fancy, and there were – there was a tremendous display of offensive thrust by that great Alabama offensive line, but Lacey did pound it ahead himself and really took it to Georgia physically in a game that meant everything for both teams. The question I have, and I alluded to this in a discussion we had maybe off camera, I'm not a huge fan of drafting Alabama players. As ludicrous as that may sound, this team obviously is a super college football team, well-coached, laden with talent. But you just wonder if the makeup of these guys when they get to the NFL is, do they want to be great or is there a shining moment in their past? I wonder if Lacey really, really wants to be great. I hope he does. Very good, Brent. Anything you would like to hit on concerning the Packers' prospects for Saturday? Absolutely. Uh, the Packers still need a safety. The Packers still need a nose tackle. They could use an outside linebacker. Outside linebacker is a little scant. Probably going to look at the sixth or seventh round for that. We've picked up a couple of extra picks by way of San Francisco. But there is a nose tackle from Alabama. Jesse Williams still on the board. Uh, there is uh, uh, two safeties I'm interested, interested in. Shamarco Thomas from Syracuse, Philip Thomas from Fresno State. Both of these guys could plug in and play on day one. And uh, there is also a wide receiver that I'm kind of interested in because we let Greg Jennings go through free agency. There is a guy named Quinton Patton from one of the small Louisiana colleges who I think is his clone. And maybe if he lasts uh, into the fourth round on Saturday, maybe he ends up wearing the green and gold. Quinton Patton caught over 100 passes last season at Louisiana Tech. Uh, Very, I thought he was underrated, but I saw him high on most people's draft boards. Thought he'd be gone by now. He's still there. Now, don't be surprised if come early Saturday he's gone, but I hope he's not. There you have it, Packer fans. Uh, let us know what you think about Brent's analysis of uh, Lacey in particular and his projections for Saturday, the NFL draft. Any draft questions you have or comments, certainly throw them our way. We enjoy the view and we enjoy the comments as well. Right here on Mark Rogers TV. Brent, thank you so much. Go Pack Go.